It's week three. All 32 teams played Tuesday night, and thanks to regional restrictions, you probably missed all of it. So let's dive into what happened. With the NHL's frozen frenzy creating buzz around hockey, the NHL and its refs can't help but embarrass themselves with another missed call. Shocker. In a close game between the Detroit Red Wings and the Seattle Kraken, keep an eye on number 17 here in Jaden Schwartz. Watch him just accidentally on purpose throw his stick as he dives to break up the play. Truly a beer league special on this one that should have automatically resulted in a penalty, except it didn't and the Kraken went the other way and scored. The Kraken ended up winning that game in OT, so ultimately that goal ends up being the difference maker. Now the officiating fumbles didn't stop there, and last night's OT between the Canucks and Rangers, Kreider seems to trip up Pedersen on the entry, and the Rangers go the other way on the turnover and score to win the game. And all this means is that we will likely have another year where officiating is extremely inconsistent. Now if you want to get fired up and run through a brick wall, I encourage you to watch David Savard shift at blocking three straight shots on the penalty kill, all while missing a skate blade. His teammates absolutely loved it, they had to help him to the bench because he couldn't skate there, but the Habs have been playing some good hockey to start the year, and they're right up there in the Atlantic despite everyone picking them to come dead last. Caulfield has looked deadly early on here to start the season, and Marty St. Louis has this young team moving in a little bit of a groove right now, so we'll see how that keeps up throughout the season. As for the Senators, everyone in Ottawa held their breath when Brady Kachuk threw this hit and went straight to the locker room. That looked like a separated shoulder, but luckily he would return, and then he'd get clipped on a hit from Alex Tuck. Brady, being the old school player that he is, gets up immediately, drops the gloves, and squares off. Buffalo grabbed a much needed 6-4 win in this one, as I'm assuming anytime these two teams meet, it'll be bad blood all year long, as they will both likely be battling for a playoff spot. Now stop me if you heard this one before, but the Bruins have choked another lead. This time, it was against the Anaheim Ducks, as they tied it up in the final minute to force OT, and then scored to win in an extra time to give the Bruins their first loss of the season. Other than that, the Bruins have had a fantastic start to the year, and the rookie Matty Partois has been a wonderful surprise stepping into the 1C role with Bergeron retiring. They've had an easier schedule, but there's optimism around this Bruins team, despite their choking habits of the past. Now, I was starting to think Ovi may never score again after he couldn't buy one against the Leafs, but luckily, an easy tap-in finally gives Ovi his first on the season. He's had a little bit of a slow start. Everyone's starting to wonder if age is catching up to him a bit. I wouldn't worry, though, because Ovi is known to be streaky at times, and he can have a stretch where he scores like 10 goals in eight games, and all of a sudden, he's right there in the Rocket conversation yet again. Other than that tap-in goal, this game in particular, Ovi had a tough time beating Joseph Wall, as Wall has been a fantastic surprise for the Leafs and their fans, as he's statistically been one of the best goalies in the league to start the season. With that, that's just another thing Leaf fans can get excited about, so that formally resumes our weekly check-in on the Leafs Cup Parade, which is still on as of right now. Somebody, for the love of God, find a way to stop Jack Hughes. Another four-point night this week as he leads the NHL in scoring. Hughes continues to be another reminder of why you stay patient with your prospects. First couple of years, everyone was calling him a bust. Everyone didn't believe in the potential that he could bring to the table. And we actually did a breakdown on him earlier in the week, showing how his game has matured and why he's having so much success. So make sure you check it out after this video. Watch Kale McCarr here go one-on-one, -on -one, shift to his backhand, and absolutely roof it. Go wash your hands, that was filthy. The Avs are a well-oiled machine right now, and this team is absolutely humming with a 6-1 record. Hey, do you remember when the Ducks took Leo Carlson over Adam Fantilli? Adam Fantilli remembers, and he decides to bury one against the Ducks for a reminder. Bedard absolutely blasts one home on the power play against the Bruins. Patrick Kane likes Selly, frame it, put it in the highlight reel, except the goal didn't count. Why? Because 30 seconds before, Chicago was offside on the entry. Easily the worst rule going on in the NHL right now. Some fans have mentioned that maybe the NHL should introduce some sort of time limit that teams can actually challenge an offside for. For example, if a team was offside 30 seconds or more prior to the goal, then the goal itself cannot be challenged for offside. Just a potential solution, but let us know what you think in the comments. As for Bedard, Marchand just won't leave him alone. Bedard doesn't care though, no reaction from him. 
Both times they faced off, the vet tried to play some mind games with the rookie, but Bedard didn't bite and nothing came of it. Shane Pinto of the Ottawa Senators was suspended 41 games due to sports betting related activities. Very ironic considering the Sens helmet sponsor is Bet99 and every other commercial I see features a pro hockey player marketing sports gambling. This league is hilarious, but he still can't do that, so he's suspended. Connor Clifton also received two games here for this headshot, can't do that either. In other news, the Battle of Alberta has officially been renamed to the Battle of Mid because both the Oilers and Flames are a goddamn mess. The Oilers' new defensive system of a box plus one is getting all the attention for their poor play, so much so that the coach had to come out and actually defend the system itself, but their goaltending and offense just hasn't been good enough either. We'll do a deeper breakdown on them as well throughout the week, so keep an eye out for that video. But the Flames still haven't recovered from their playoff loss to the Oilers two years ago. Ever since getting rid of Kachuk and Goudreau, this team has been a mess. Zadorov called out the Flames saying that there's too many individuals playing by themselves, and after signing Uyghur, Kadri, and Huberto to long-term deals, their production has been concerning especially early on this season. Last year, it was easy to blame the head coach, but now, what's the excuse? It seems like the creativity and confidence of their top players like Lindholm, Kadri, Huberto, and Weger have all just evaporated. We're only in week three, and guys are getting frustrated, they're apologizing to the fans, and it's just been an awful start. The Battle of Mid will take place tonight in an outdoor Heritage Classic game, and luckily for all hockey fans, it looks like McDavid will be healthy enough to play. Joe Thornton also officially announced his retirement this week, although he's pretty much been retired for the last few years. He was one of the game's best playmakers. It was a shame he never got his cup. However, that means that this statement from John Tortorella years ago is now more true than ever. And Joe hasn't won a goddamn thing in this league. He could go down as a player, being one of the better players in our league, never to win anything. So what he should do is just shut up. Quick peek at the standings, Vegas, Boston, and Colorado are all still at the top of the league, and all the way at the bottom are the Flames, Oilers, and Sharks. Jack Hughes leads the NHL in points, and Alex Dabrinkit leads the NHL in goals. So, what did you think of week three? What surprised you the most? Who's your early season dark horse to go deep? Drop a comment down below, and before I end this video, I do wanna send our prayers and condolences to Adam Johnson's family, friends, and teammates. Adam passed away last night after he got cut by a skate blade during a game in England. A freak accident that ended in the worst possible way. I can't imagine what the people closest to him are going through right now. And I just want to end this week's video with him scoring his first NHL goal in his home state of Minnesota. Lafferty is in, rips his shot, stop for the rebound, Johnson, he scores! Get that puck, first NHL goal, Adam Johnson! 3-1 Pittsburgh!